for this next session, we wanted to showcase a customer of ours who is leading by example and implementing a business-driven security strategy. In order to do that, we wanted to look at GDPR because um, it's just a glaring use case for where the world of security and risk come together. And so what we decided to do was invite our customer, Dell Technologies, uh, also our parent company now, um, to talk to us about what they're doing in their GDPR program and also give us you know, some, some learnings from, from what they've gone through and some lessons that might benefit you all. So first, let me just uh, take a moment to introduce our speakers. This is Del Skivington, Chief Privacy Officer and Vice President, Compliance, Risk, and Privacy. Mike McLaughlin, Chief Ethics and Compliance Officer. And Janet Levesque, Chief Information Security Officer of RSA, who worked with the team uh, to help the, this project. So the first question, Del. Tell us a little bit about your privacy program. Sure, so I joined Dell in 2011, which was also a time of great transformation for Dell. And the first thing we did was we took a look at uh, the privacy program as it existed, which was a good privacy program, but given the risks that we were going to face in the new, in the new environment, um, we decided to recruit some new, uh, highly uh, trained pr privacy professionals added to the team and then embarked on a, a risk assessment. Um, we took a maturity model approach, taking a look at the uh, privacy program from top to bottom. And so what we were really looking for was not just what was the policies and procedures in place and whether we were doing training. Oftentimes that's what compliance looks like, policies, procedures, and training. But what we really wanted to do was to make sure that there were the right controls in place to bolster that program. So we took a real deep dive on the ones that we thought were the highest risk for Dell. Things like privacy impact assessments when we had product innovation. Things like incident response, which we just talked about in the last session, whether we had a mature incident response process. International data transfers because of the uh, growing number of laws with respect to international transfers. And then one of our biggest risks that was a growing and emerging risk was third parties. Mm -hmm. And so whether we had the right processes in place to assess our third parties. So what we did was we took a very strategic approach to the assessment, and then we built an annual risk assessment process. So every year, we're taking a look at what those emerging risks might be and maturing our program based on that annual assessment. Okay. Mike, how has your view changed in, in, in regards to GDPR, and how are you approaching it now? Yeah, so the good news, Holly, is that I think we started from a relatively strong place when it comes to GDPR. Um, you know, Dale and the team have been following that regulation since its inception. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a privacy by design approach, mm -hmm. which I think will serve us really well in this GDPR journey of all of ours. Um, but the first thing we did after the law passed was we did a a thorough gaps analysis to see where we were strong and where we may have some areas to focus on. And we came up with 10 separate work streams that we think we can focus on. And Dale's been leading those work streams, so I'll let Dale give, uh, give a little bit more uh, on those. Yeah, so again, doing that annual risk assessment, GDPR appeared on our risk assessment for the last couple years. And, and when you do a risk assessment, you don't just say, well, there's the risk. You develop a mitigation strategy. So our mitigation strategy was first, let's figure out, based on this 200-page regulation with guidance many, many more times that, um, what we needed to do. And again, we came from a position of strength. As Mike said, we had a lot of mature things in place. We had a good international data transfer program. We had a good um, incident response process. We had really good third-party management. But the GDPR had lots of new expectations. So based on that, we, de we developed our risk assessment. It came up with 10 work streams. And each of those work streams, whether it's incident response, whether it's PIA, whether it's uh, noticing consent, has developed over the past year a very robust mitigation plan uh, to address each of those. 
Now we informed those plans, and this is very significant. We went out and we talked to the regulators. I just got back from Hong Kong, where all the regulators were meeting, and we had a conversation about what exactly is the expectation. Because for those of you who know privacy, much of it is based on best practice. We kind of all build the best practices, then hold each other accountable based on those best practices. So we met with regulators, we met with trade associations, we met with our peers, and based on that, we came to a risk-based, informed approach of how we were going to go and mitigate each of these uh, gaps that we identified in the work streams. And all this was happening as you were going through a major transformation of your own, purchasing uh, EMC, which was the company that, that we, RSA came from. Uh, so that's a lot to do all at once. And Janet, that's how you got involved. So how is your preparation in the context of, of this timing any different? Yeah, so I mean, I think we had an already established risk management program at RSA that we were then able to parlay with the activities that were being performed at Dell. And so we were able to take a lot of the work that Dale and the team had already done in terms of identifying those 10 work streams and then being able to map our own activities to those work streams and really being able to leverage the work products and the toolkits that had already been established by Dell. And, and Dell, what's been easier or more difficult than you had expected going into it? Well, one thing, Holly, you mentioned, which is GDPR hit about the same time as this massive integration right. hit. And integrations, as we all know, are tough. We were really lucky because EMC, RSA, and the other businesses owned by EMC had already a strong privacy orientation. So when we were able to do the due diligence, what we saw was they not only had really good privacy impact assessment processes, really good third-party processes, international data transfer processes, notice and consent processes, but equally fortunate for us was our approaches were very similar. Mm. So integrating them has not been as difficult as you might have thought uh, you know, in terms of looking at it from the outside. What has been difficult, and I think this will resonate with many in the crowd, is you know, this new, there's some new obligations mm -hmm. under the GDPR. Data subject access rights are one of them. Uh, right to be forgotten, right to portability. Um, those are very, very difficult when you deal with many legacy systems, multiple systems. And so I would say the two things that uh, we are struggling the most with are data mapping across those systems and then figuring out how we are going to take the right approach, the right risk-based approach, because there's never going to be 100%. Um, when mm -hmm. you talk about every customer data element under the GDPR is email name alone, um, you have to take the right approach in terms of where you're going to put in APIs and where you're going to give access and how you're going to develop those, those programs. So I, I would say that's one, number one. Number two, which is really interesting, that's, that's causing a lot of, I think, not value-added work, is all the renegotiation of clauses mm. um, with vendors, suppliers, and customers. Because of everybody's concern about the big penalties under GDPR, everybody wants to get their contract language right. A lot of work there. Mm -hmm. Mike? Well, one of the things that I think went particularly well was, and, and was critically important to us, was getting senior, manager, enga senior mm -hmm. management engagement early on. Um, you know, for those of us who do compliance, getting the share of mind and share of wallet with senior management can often be the difference between success and failure. And we were very fortunate. We started educating senior leaders at Dell and, and Dell EMC early on, um, and we had a receptive audience. Um, you know, for example, in March, we actually had Michael Dell and his entire leadership team listen to a one-hour presentation on GDPR and cybersecurity. Uh, our leaders in Europe, because they're at ground zero, they went through even greater training. Uh, and I think that's made a big difference in terms of getting the programs that Dale has talked about you know, across the finish line. Get the buy-in early. Yep, getting buy-in early and get it vocal. Get it early and get it vocal. Good. Janet, what about you? I think leveraging off what Mike said, a lot of it is being building out an awareness program. So not only the executive team, but the, the lay practitioners understand what it is and how it might potentially impact their business unit. Um, for us, you know, some of the challenges were really around that data mapping exercise to really understand how data flows through our system, 
where it gets stored, processed, transmitted, and then what do we do with it? Particularly, is it the right to be forgotten? We had a long conversation at a session I was in this morning about that and how you're able to really operationalize that is a real big challenge. And I think the second point on that is really getting visibility into our unstructured data. So we may be able to take a lift look at our high value asset inventory and map all of those applications, but then when we're looking at unstructured data in spreadsheets and in Word documents, that's an area we're really having to roll up our sleeves and spend a lot more time looking at it, and that's been more of a challenge than we originally thought. Mike, you talked to a lot of customers. Uh, what do you see as being their biggest challenges that they're facing? Yeah, I think what we just yeah. heard really resonates with me, and, and that is security. I'm a basketball player as well, so like Sonia, I think you got to protect the paint. And I think security has got to be up there with, uh, with our, the customers that we speak with. So really having a firm strategy. Yep. You know, and it's interesting, the security point is really interesting because for those of you who have studied the GDPR, you probably know there's nothing new about security under GDPR. GDPR says you should have adequate security. Adequate security was under the directive and is under most laws in, in most jurisdictions. So there's nothing new about the security side of GDPR. However, it is, and it should be on everybody's radar screen, as the number one risk. And the real difference under GDPR with security are, are, are two big things. One is the new breach notification right. requirements. Because in the past, while in the US, we've had breach notification requirements for some time, in Europe, that wasn't the case, and hasn't been the case. There's only a few countries in Europe where breach notification is required. Under the GDPR, for many breaches, notification will be required to at least one regulator and maybe more. And that regulator now has that big stick, right? That 4% of annual revenue as a potential penalty if when they come in and do their investigation, they find that security wasn't adequate. So that is a big mm -hmm. difference. The other big difference is the GDPR's requirement on documentation. The GDPR, unlike many of the US laws, really focuses on making sure that you've documented what you did, why you did it, and what the actual incident. So some of the tools, my team worked with the RSA Archer team to develop the tool that was announced today uh, um, so that we will have a good, robust tool to use uh, to document some of our uh, GDPR requirements, including breach notification and breach response and mitigation plans. Mm -hmm. Janet, from your point of view, what is the biggest challenge or difficulty that practitioners have? So I think as practitioners, it's understanding, like any new compliance regulation, what the nuances are for your business and understanding how your business processes map to that and how you are documenting those processes. So as Dale mentioned, a lot of maybe procedures and protocols are in place, but there aren't the actual documents that you could provide to a regulator to say this is how we're achieving our practices. And so I think there's going to be a huge documentation effort and the ability to support that documentation. So the old trust but verify that we hear whenever we're being audited, I think the same thing comes true in this particular case. And I think it is, it's mapping that unstructured data too is the other big challenge I think for pr practitioners because you can look at your high value assets but then the, all these sort of shadow IT devices or shadow IT applications that maybe you aren't aware of are probably gonna be the biggest stretch for us. Right, and you have to be ready at any moment, right, at, at the drop of a hat. It's no longer necessarily an annual uh, audit process. It's, continu it's continuous. It happens all the time. So can you speak a little bit, Dale, on continuous compliance and your, your view on that? Yeah, so Mike mentioned privacy by design, and that term's been around for a while. It was coined, you know, maybe even eight years ago by a, a privacy commissioner in Canada. It's found its way into the GDPR. And what privacy by design means is that as you build products, as you build processes, as you do services, you consider the compliance and privacy risks attendant to that particular process. And you not only identify the risk early on, you identify what mitigation strategies you think are appropriate or not appropriate, you document them, and that's, again, something we're going to use the RSA Archer tool to do. You document those decisions because this is, again, 
the regulators are going to hold you accountable, not so much if you got it wrong, they will, but they'll really, do, they'll really uh, hit you hard with a penalty if you didn't even try. You didn't even right. try to identify what those risks are. So at Dell, we call it compliance by design. We do it with all our compliance programs, whether it's antitrust or anti-corruption or privacy. We build into our different um, work streams uh, a check on uh, compliance at the very early stages of a, a new product service or process. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn in going through this. Uh, maybe you can provide our audience who um, is, is facing with this now with some advice. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I think that I, we got six months, a little over six months before effective date. Uh, for those of you who are sitting there and going, gosh, I don't, didn't do anything yet. Um, I, I think the most important thing to think about is do your s assessment. Get your assessment against what the new expectations are, because there are some new ones. Um, and then take that assessment and figure out from a risk-based approach, what are the high value things that you can work on? Document your plan. That's what the regulators, every regulator I sat down and spoke to in Hong Kong said to me, that is the key. Make sure you are documenting your approach to compliance. They wanna see, they know this is a journey. One regulator in Hong Kong was heard to say, they don't expect full compliance for another 10 years. I'm not counting on that. Uh, but what I'm counting on is that I've got some lead time on the things that are a little tougher or still gray. I can still work on those, but I've got to get them documented in terms of my plan. And they want to know you're taking the right steps to do that. Exactly. Yeah. Mike? So, so my advice, for those of you who don't yet have it, is hire someone like Dale or Janet, <laughs> uh, which is what I did. Um, it seemed to be working out okay for me. Um, <laughs> But no, in reality, I give the advice on GDPR that I give on all compliance programs. You know, documentation and, and having a program that meets all the paper requirements is critical, no doubt about it. But it also has to live and breathe in the hearts and minds of your employees. It's got to be something not just that the center cares about, but something that your folks in the region and in all the fields care about. And if you have that, and if they see it's not just about compliance, it's about protecting customer data. It's about giving your customers choice. It's about things that really matter to them. If that resonates with them, then your compliance program is off to a great start. So it's also ingrained in the culture of how people Absolutely. work every day. Absolutely. Janet, what about you? Yeah, it's gotta be woven into the fabric of the enterprise. So I think you really have to build that awareness and that training program so people know how it impacts them and how it can impact your overall business. And I think like any compliance activity, it's not a you know set it and forget it where you're able to just say, okay, now we're compliant and we've checked the box. It's an ongoing journey where you're making sure that as you're building out new programs that you're taking this into account as you're building new programs, that you're doing things like privacy impact assessments as you're bringing on a new application or a new suite of products and that it's part, it becomes part of the fabric of your operation. Right. It's worth mentioning, um, Dell isn't a small company. Uh, quite a bit of scale and offices all over the world, customers all over the world, and a really large supply chain. And uh, it's worth mentioning that you guys worked with us to help define these two new modules for RSA Archer that we came out with this, uh, this week that we announced. So check those out. And thank you so much for that. It really is going to help a lot of people. Uh, and thank you for shining your light there. Thank you. Please thank me in, in um, thanking, please, <laughs> Please thank me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Take two. Uh, <laughs> Please help me to thank our panelists, and you guys have a have a great night. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Holly. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stage, Mike Huckabee.